The title of this project is, Semi-Supervised Learning of Functional Connectome for Disease Classification. FMRI is a type of neuroimaging modality that has been commonly used in the study of neurological diseases. This is because of its potential for the discovery of early disease biomarkers. The original FMRI is a time series of 3D images. Statistical methods have been adapted to FMRI to investigate functional connectivities between regions of brain. Functional connectome is a collective set of functional connectivity in the brain, which can be represented as a 2D square matrix. Brain disorders such as autism spectrum disorder, ASD, and attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, ADHD, have been proven to be associated with abnormal resting state functional connectivity. Deep learning methods have been applied onto functional connectome to classify between healthy and diseased subjects. However, these methods were prone to overfitting due to the high dimensionality of functional connectome and the small dataset size available. This could lead to poor classification performance and the generation of ungeneralizable biomarkers. To prevent overfitting, several recent work have attempted dimensionality reduction techniques, including, using auto-encoders to learn lower dimensional latent encodings as inputs to classifiers, and using network pruning techniques to remove unused nodes in the deep learning models in order to reduce the model complexity. Another possible way to overcome overfitting is to increase the dataset sizes. In recent years, open-source data repositories have been set up by collating fMRI data of a specific disease from multiple sites. However, using such datasets to augment our existing dataset could introduce unwanted variations due to side effects and label inconsistencies. Combat harmonization is one of the most prominent methods that have been used to address side effects. However, existing work has not taken label inconsistency issue into account. Hence, semi-supervised learning is proposed to overcome label inconsistency issue. Most of the existing work involves supervised learning SL, where only labeled data is used to train deep learning models. Semi-supervised learning is achieved by incorporating unlabeled data from multiple other sites into the training routine to help deep learning models learn better intermediate representations. We discard the labels when using the data from the other sites to prevent label inconsistency problem. In this project, two model architectures were proposed. The first model is called SHRED, SSL with data harmonization with encoder-decoder classifier. The model first performs data harmonization via a harmonization module to remove side effects from the original data. The harmonization module comprises of linear layers, with the aim of simulating combat harmonization. Hence, it would introduce some inductive bias due to the assumption of how side effects would be present in the original data. After performing data harmonization, the harmonized data is then passed to an encoder-decoder classifier model, which is based on variational autoencoder, to perform disease classification and data reconstruction. The inverse of data harmonization would be performed at the output of the decoder to obtain the final reconstructed data. During training, both the harmonization module and the encoder-decoder classifier are optimized simultaneously via a joint loss function. This removes the need of separating data harmonization and the training of encoder-decoder classifier into two separate steps. The second model is called VAESDR, Variational Autoencoder with Site Difference Removal. In contrast to SHRED, VAESDR removes site effects by decoupling the latent encoding into site encoding and disease encoding. Disease classification is performed using the disease encoding, whereas site classification is performed using the site encoding. The advantage of disentangling site and disease encoding from the latent encoding is, to avoid site information from influencing the disease classifier when predicting the disease labels. Two decoders are then used to decode the site information and the disease information respectively. The final reconstructed data would be the sum of the outputs of the decoder. This method of removing side effects allow higher learning flexibility as there is no additional assumption made on how the side effects should exist in the original data. However, this also makes the training more difficult and highly affected by the loss function. The summary of the experiment results on Abide dataset are shown in this bar chart. For the existing methods, ASDSAE-NET and GAEFCNN, shown as the yellow bars, only the labeled data from the targeted site is used to train the models. Whereas for our proposed models, VAESDR in purple and shred in green, 
We train the models using the data from the targeted site as the labeled data, and the data from the other sites as the unlabeled data. From the bar chart, our proposed models, VAESDR and SHRED, outperformed the existing methods, ASDSAENET and GAEFCNN, significantly, with SHRED slightly outperformed VAESDR, indicating the effectiveness of our proposed models, and the importance of taking both site effects and label inconsistencies into consideration when dealing with datasets involving multiple sites. The biomarkers generated from overfitted neural networks are likely to be site-specific, and may not be applicable across populations. While features relevant to a particular subpopulation can be identified using site-specific biomarkers, it is still desirable to differentiate between site-specific and site-invariant biomarkers, as site-invariant biomarkers are able to represent more generalizable features, that could be present in other populations as well. Biomarkers generated from SHRED were shown to highlight a subset of previously discovered site-specific biomarkers, which could potentially represent site-invariant biomarkers. Besides, SHRED was also shown have the tendency of placing more emphasis on site-invariant biomarkers, and exclude site-specific biomarkers during disease classification. Hence, this could provide deeper insights in differentiating between site-specific and site-invariant biomarkers. In conclusion, in this project two models were proposed, SHRED and VAESDR, both outperformed the existing methods in terms of disease classification accuracy. This implied the importance of addressing both site effects and label inconsistencies when dealing with datasets involving multiple sites. Biomarkers generated from SHRED were shown to emphasize on a subset of previously discovered features, which could indicate site-invariant biomarkers. The validity of the existence of site-specific and site-invariant biomarkers, and the clinical significance of such biomarkers can be investigated in follow-up work.